This is the Aachen Cathedral in Germany, and an item found in this place caused me to look more into Charlemagne. The Palace of Aachen of Emperor Charlemagne is one of the oldest cathedrals in Europe and was built for Charlemagne, consecrated around 805 AD. And I'll go over this cathedral and also what's in there later in the video. But Charlemagne is considered to be the father of Europe and was crowned Holy Roman Emperor by Pope Leo III. He reigned in the Carolingian dynasty from 748 AD to 814 AD. That Carolingian dynasty is a continuation of the Merovingians. Essentially, Charlemagne is a Merovingian, and so are his descendants. The Merovingian bloodline dates to King Morovi of the Frankish dynasty, who France is named after. Morovi ruled from 411 to 458 AD, and tradition holds that Morovi's father was a Quinitar or sea bull, so Nephilim offspring in mythology so-called. Gary Wayne writes that above all European royal houses of conspiracy are the Merovingians. The Merovingians are also linked to the British Grail dynasties. Secret societies such as the Knights Templar, the Freemasons, and other Gnostic sects work to keep the Merovingian claim to priestly and royal heritage designed to support their alleged rightful claims to rule. And the concept of knighthood originated with Charlemagne with Twelve Paladins, which is mirrored in the Twelve Knights of the Round Table. Knighthood is a concept frequently covered on this channel. See my playlist titled Knights of the Crown. Charlemagne was the first emperor to reign after the fall of the Roman Empire, his successors being considered as legitimate Roman emperors to the Western Europe going forward. And I've covered all of that before, but I just wanted to review it since it's relevant to this video also. So Charlemagne fathered 20 children from his wives and many other children uh, from other women. All the Louis, kings of France, came down through the line of Charlemagne. So King Louis, the House of Bourbon, the House of Anjou are all a continuation of the Merovingian line, as well as even Vlad of Wallachia or Vlad Dracul, which you can see that genealogy traced in the Realm of the Ring Lords book by Gardner, Lawrence Gardner. In literature and movies, this line of the vampires can be seen in Interview with the Vampire with Armand de Bourbon as the head vampire in Paris and Louis in New Orleans also as a vampire. So I have a video titled Armand de Bourbon that covers that. But Louis is Brad Pitt's character and he was a wealthy plantation owner in 1791 in Louisiana in the book and the movie, which is similar to the plot of the vampires in Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter, which I did a video about. And I definitely think that that's tied to Jeb Stewart of the House of Stewart, who was a Confederate general. But Brad Pitt, in real life, is Queen Elizabeth's 25th cousin, twice removed. We've talked about the fact that they use their uh, bloodlines as actors in their polytheist history and movies. Another historical vampire legend of New Orleans is that King Louis XV of France handpicked young French women to send to New Orleans to comfort the French colonists. They were housed at a convent titled the Old Ursuline Convent in New Orleans which was built there by order of the French crown in the mid-1700s. And those uh, women were known as the casket girls because the trunks that they brought with them were the shape of caskets. They were said to have been pale-skinned and with bloodshot eyes. And so, because of their appearance, they were mistreated by their husbands and society and were forced into prostitution. So they returned to France by order of the king. But their trunks, or caskets, were left there in the attic of the convent. It's said that the doors were nailed shut with 800 silver nails blessed by the Pope, where they remain to this day in the attic of that convent. And apparently in 1978, some paranormal investigators were murdered on site and drained of blood. So they, of course, were reported to have been vampires or to have smuggled in vampires. Who knows? But it is interesting that those um, were sent over by this very Merovingian bloodline that we talk about with Bourbon Street in New Orleans being named for the House of Bourbon. So you have to ask yourself, why are vampires in literature many times associated with these French royals and also New Orleans? 
Why is that? Another movie reference to the Merovingians is The Matrix. The Merovingian is the leader of a powerful organized crime syndicate. Described by the Oracle as one of the oldest of us, the Merovingian came to the Matrix long ago with his wife, Peresphone. And Peresphone is a Greek goddess and the queen of the underworld in Greek mythology. And she's the daughter of Zeus and Demeter, the wife of Hades, the ruler of the underworld. Always pictured drinking red wine with a chalice, the Merovingian is in these Matrix movies. But in recorded history, Charlemagne married an elf princess, Fastrada. She was the daughter of a powerful East Frankish Count Adorf. The Fastrada legend tells of a magic ring that Fastrada is said to have received from Charlemagne. This ring, the stone of which was a gift from a snake, bound Charlemagne to Fastrada in a way that he did not want to release her corpse for burial, even when it was already beginning to decompose. Eventually, Archbishop Turpin of Reims took the ring and threw it in a lake near Aachen. Charlemagne's father was Pepin the Short, son of Martel, who reestablished masonry in France and as a Gnostic was educated in the sacred sciences and teaching the mysteries to France. Martel was credited with introducing the originating old Gothic style of architecture into France. Charlemagne himself was a great supporter and contributor to the sacred sciences and arts, thereby identifying Charlemagne as both a Mason and a Gnostic, secretly initiated into the mysteries. And I just wanted to show a picture of Charlemagne here, a painting. This painting is from the 19th century, so the 1800s. And it's shown here with the priest with this mitre hat and a curved staff, like a wizard's staff. You can see it right here. And then also there's a guy in the back here with one of these Hermes helmets on with the wings back there. And this line of Merovingians and Charlemagne also rolls down to the King of Jerusalem and Templar Knights. So let's take a look at this cathedral. Charlemagne began the construction of the Palatine Chapel around 796 AD and in 805 AD Pope Leo III consecrated the finished chapel. The foundry was brought to Aachen near the end of the 8th century and was utilized to cast multiple bronze pieces from doors and railings to the horse and bear statues. Charlemagne was buried in the chapel in 814. Those are just some pictures of it. Following Charlemagne's canonization by Antipope Paschal III in 1165, the chapel became a draw for pilgrims due to the enormous flow of pilgrims in 1355, a Gothic choir hall was added. So here are just some photos of it, but oh, this says these are the wolf doors, lines on the wolf doors. But what is this? It's a lectern with an eagle on the front. And a bat on the back side of it. What is that doing there? It says it's from the 15th century, so that would be the 1400s. And the photo was taken in July of 2015. That is very, very curious. So who was king of France during the 1400s? Charles VI was king from 1380 to 1422. But he's the one who had mental illness. And Queen, his wife, Queen Isabel of Bavaria, and his brother Louis, fellow of Duke of New Orleans, or Duke of Orleans, excuse me, ruled in his place. And he was also named Charles the Mad, thought of, he was thought of, he was made of glass. And I did a video about him titled Made of Glass. But anyway, this is a real lectern inside that cathedral. Not a movie or a book or a play. It's actually there. A Roman Empire eagle on the front with a bat on the back side of it. Thanks for listening.